stem cell transplants are usually used as components of therapy for bone marrow types of cancers. So leukemias, lymphomas, multiple myeloma, um, diseases that relate to the bone marrow. They have been tried in the past for solid tumors like breast cancer, but that's not usually used anymore. Occasionally, stem cell transplant is still used for refractory solid tumors like um, testicular cancers or sarcomas, but those patients are rare since our therapies uh, for those are generally pretty good. Can you talk about where the stem cells come from for these transplants? We generally do two sorts of transplants. One is called autologous. That's where a patient gets transplanted with his or her own stem cells. So we collect stem cells from a patient, freeze them, and then give a patient high doses of chemotherapy. And the effect of that high dose chemotherapy would be to um, essentially obliterate the bone marrow. And we rescue that effect by having someone's own stem cells reinfused back into them. So we reconstitute someone's own bone marrow. In the other case, which is called allogeneic stem cell transplant, we use another person's stem cells to reconstitute a patient's bone marrow. And who that other person is depends on how we can find a donor for that patient. Our preference would be to take stem cells from a first degree relative, either a sibling, a parent, or a child of the patient. If we're not able to do a related matched transplant, then we look in the international and national registries to find someone who by chance matches our patient at a position called the HLA locus. So we look for HLA matched donor who is someone who has participated in a um, donor drive somewhere and has said in the future if someone needs my stem cells I will give anonymously to that patient. So we search this registry and we see if by chance our patient matches anyone in the registries. If they do, then we pursue confirming that donor and, as, and getting stem cells from that donor. Uh, if we're not able to do that, then we do more experimental types of transplants where we can, say, combine a relative who matches partly with our patient combined with stem cells that come from, say, an umbilical cord. In those cases, um, the parents of newborn babies donate those new stem cells that come from a new person uh, into a bank that can be used um, for transplant. And those are much more experimental types of transplants. So again, our preference is to do matched sibling transplants or matched related transplants or matched unrelated donor transplants. Uh, what is the donation process like uh, for a donor? Uh, it, Generally, a uh, donor, um, sorry, generally for a donor, the process of donation is simple. A donor generally has a choice of giving the stem cells from peripheral blood or going to the operating room and donating in the operating room from bone marrow itself. Most patients prefer to give their stem cells from their peripheral blood. And in that case, what we do is the person takes a growth factor called GCSF or Neupogen for several days in advance of the donation. On the morning of the donation, they come into our outpatient clinic. They have two IVs placed, one in each arm, and they sit essentially hooked up to a machine for several hours that takes blood from one side of, from one arm and collects the white blood cells and then puts the red blood cells and platelets back into the other arm. So they're essentially just giving their white blood cells. And what happens to the cells after they've been donated? So when we do um, either an autologous or a matched uh, related transplant, we freeze the cells in advance. And so when a patient comes in to have that transplant, we know that we already have the cells collected and they're frozen away. In the case of a transplant that's coming from a matched unrelated donor through the registry, those stem cells are actually given live. So we actually prepare the patient with chemotherapy 
as that donor somewhere else is preparing to give the stem cells. And so that's a coordinated effort that happens. Um, but generally, we, when we collect the cells, we do it in advance and they're frozen. And they're good for many, many years frozen.